you know, unfortunately, we came up short. Uh, the goal all year long was to win a national championship. Soccer is a cruel sport. It's about finishing. Unfortunately, we weren't able to finish, and USC was. Um, I was proud at the way we fought. I, I thought we, we brought everything, uh, but unfortunately, we just didn't get the win. Just listening to you guys, it seems like you're over it. Uh, hear, hear some laughing, hear, some, hear a lot of laughing it's, and loud talk. And it's, it's my job as um, the leader, the mom, as they call me, to make sure that these girls uh, in, enjoy all the accomplishments that they've accomplished. I'm not over it, so I guess I'm the best actress in West Virginia, next to Gardner, right? Um, but I am, you know, being the competitor that I am, and that's what drives me, it, it's tough to get over, but I also know that there's so much to celebrate. So it's a little yin and a little yang for me, um, but more importantly, I want my team right now to feel good about what they've done and not be super competitive like their coach. When you look back over everything in the last 20 years that you've been here, I mean, coaches today come and go so much. What's kept you here and, and kept the success the way it is? I am the most loyal coach in America. <laughs> um, I'm like a dog, right? Uh, I, you know, for me, it's always been about a commitment. And I committed myself to this program. I started this program, so there's always been a special place for me to finish the job. I wish I would have been able to finish the job on Sunday because I set out to win a national championship. And unfortunately, I didn't bring it home because uh, that was the goal. Uh, you know, 21 years ago, a much younger version of me set out to do that. So it is a rarity that a coach stays in a, in a job as long as I have. Um, I'm very proud of what I've been able to accomplish here um, in a short amount of time and to bring this team to national prominence, but uh, unfortunately just didn't bring that trophy home. Where are you moving ahead? I mean, you you know, you obviously lose uh, some pretty pretty uh, decent athletes. Uh, where, where are you as, as, as you move forward now from this spot? You know, I, I've always stated this. You can never replace seniors. You know, I'll never be able to replace the senior class that we had, but my staff does an incredible job recruiting. We feel that we're going to bring uh, in some really dynamic players to continue the tradition here, and the hope is to continue the development piece and make this the returners that much better and um, bring in the best freshman class that we can bring in. So that's where we're at. How much of the team's identity, gameplay style, and like the overall strategy will have to change because of the departure of those cornerstone players? Because sort of you had the identity with you know Ashley and Tadisha, and you know you had that set up. Will any, will there have to be any drastic changes, or is it going to be mostly the same, just with different players in their place? You know, if you ask um, the players this year, they're going to tell you we play totally different than we've had in years past. And I'm going to have to really understand what we do have returning. I do believe that Keisha was a huge anchor in that back line. And I was able to take a lot of risks having her. But I can tell you the returners um, are going to understand my expectation. And, and we'll feel that out this spring moving into the fall. In midfield, you know, again, Ashley Lawrence was able to do things for us, but, you know, I'm going to have to adapt. I'm going to have to find ourselves, and we're going to have to figure out what's our our best team for 2017. And, you know, I definitely adapt to the talent and to what our strengths will be, and I'll have to figure that out soon enough. Who do you expect to uh, step up and take on a greater leadership role now that you have the amount of seniors departing that you do? Um, you know, I think um, we call her Ziamadin. Um, obviously, Carla Portillo um, and Michaela Bam. I mean, I, I think those are going to be this, you know, some of the impact seniors for next year. Then you look at Heather. You know, she, she took on a huge role for us this year in Nia Gordon. Uh, but, you know, I mean, um, Ali Magaletta, you know, she was a huge, huge piece in midfield. So I, I always lean on seniors first. Mm -hmm. And then I'll, I'll reach deep for uh, the next class. But, uh, you know, we'll have a leadership group this spring, and I'll see what leaders emerge and continue to develop because we have a ton of leaders on this team, and we'll go from there. As the, as the mother, t take me inside the locker room right after, you know, right after the game. And did you 
ever feel anything like that before, one way or the other? And did you have to comfort them? Did they have to comfort you? I mean, no. I mean, okay. So, uh, the agony of defeat. Yeah. Uh, when you've been in this business long enough, you've had the agony of defeat. I went into this game like every other game I've gone into. I never made it bigger than what, um, you know, bigger than a national. I never went into the game going, hey, this is a national championship game. Um, I knew what was at stake, but my job was to make sure that the team was okay. Nobody, comf I don't, I didn't need to be comforted. comforted. I made sure that um, I told the team that that game and this moment didn't define us, that I was proud of our seniors, that our seniors had so much to be proud of. And my main goal before I walked into that locker room was to make sure that my team felt a little bit better. It's a great moment knowing that you know, only two teams get there, but it's also kind of sobering to know that there is only two teams to get there and you know that chances are you know, it might be your only chance who knows I mean because it is obviously hard to do yeah what when you think about that I mean uh, how do you I don't want to say stomach it yeah yeah, <laughs> I, guess. yeah. I, I you know last year when we got to the lead eight game you know you, you think about okay this is a great team this is a great moment will I ever get back and um, I, my approach has always been I'm going to work as hard as I can. I'm going to make sure that I'm maximizing the potential of everybody around me, my athletes, my staff. And if we don't get back, I know I have no regrets because I've done everything in my power to get back there. But, of course, it, it is so hard to do what we did this year. And um, being, being a coach, you can't imagine how hard it is. And uh, so I do appreciate uh, the understanding that we might never get back, but I will tell you, uh, once I recharge myself, uh, you know, there will be a point where I approach it the same way. I'm going to keep working and, um, you know, push through barriers and jump over fences and barricades and do whatever I can to make sure that we've done everything we can to get back. Kind of on the flip side of that, though, that experience can make a team hungrier the following mm -hmm. year. I mean, with the group of girls you have, uh, even though you may have to change some things, the personality and having a group come back with that taste of winning and getting so close, could, could you see that playing a factor next year? I do. I, I know that a lot of the returners from the um, 2015 team, you know, came in my office after that Penn State game and had tons of regrets. So that will be our strength. That will be something I'll fall back on. And um, as, as a coach, you always say, we want to protect ourselves from losing. You love to win, but you hate to lose. So the, the agony of that defeat will be, I think, a lot of what we'll fall back on and the strength to get us back uh, next year. When you were starting this program and you wanted to set out and figure out what you wanted to, to make define this program characteristics, how did that process work for you and, and how did you come about what uh, you wanted this program to be about? I, I'm not going to, there's, there's so many pieces to this program, but I do believe a program or a team takes on the identity of a coach. So I was always just true to who I was as a, as a young coach. You're trying, you're trying to figure yourself out, but the one thing I can tell you is I've, I've always been hardworking. And that was something I, I, no matter what team I coached, no matter uh, where I am or what I was doing, I wanted everyone to know uh, that they could always count on the women's soccer team to outwork anybody in the country. And even though we lost uh, that USC game, I still believe that we outworked them. So in that, in that box, you could check they worked harder than USC. We might not have won, but we sure did work, work harder. So that's, that's probably the, the backbone and the springboard to this program, um, and then you can go from from that point on. Sure. Thinking back to the Final Four, what does being a team as decorated as UNC do for the program as a whole, maybe from a momentum standpoint, recruiting, whatever it may be? Yeah, it, it's, it would be hard not to point to the fact that we beat the godfather of soccer. I think that's what you're saying. You know, that um, back in the day, every little girl in a ponytail dreamed to play for the Tar Heels because of their 20-plus national championships. So for us to go in there and, and to beat North Carolina um, was, was huge because of the respect I have for that program and, and the players and uh, for what they've done. So it, it, was, it, was, an, it was a great 
opportunity for us to get to the College Cup and to beat North Carolina along the way. So I guess it boils down to respect. If you really respect a program, it means that much more. So it means that much more. Have you had a moment to be able to sort of just reflect on the season as a whole? And is there anything in particular that, like, you'll always remember about this particular team? Um, I have not had one moment to reflect yet, and I'm, I'm, I'm so looking forward to that. There's so many loose ends we still have to tidy up here um, before, you know, I can reflect. But... Uh, yeah, I, I would. There's, there's, there's going to be many moments, and and the one that everyone talks about will be that TCU game. To me, that was um, a defining moment that I really knew that you know this team was in. But there'll about, be more. You talked about those little girls in ponytails wanting to play for UNC. How many of those now? you think flipped it and want to play for West Virginia? Right? Well, I sure hope all of them. <laughs> I, I sure hope all of them, because I'm much cuter than Anson. Um, so, you know, I, I can only hope that uh, players see the value of West Virginia University and playing for me and, and how committed I would be to uh, developing their game. I, I've always approached it that this is my passion and I've always respected and appreciated um, anyone's career that have come through the program. So I hope uh, there's lots of little ponytails that want to be Mountaineers. Even, even losing, have you ever, this experience of the NCAA tournament, have you ever gone through anything like that as far as having fun and being, drawing a team together? <laughs> And the likes so. yeah, of it's it's funny. Everyone kept saying to me, "Enjoy the moment, enjoy it, enjoy it." Couldn't. I'm breaking down tape. I'm uh -huh. making sure these, you know, it, the turnaround was incredible. Um, of course, I enjoyed it, and I'll take. I never take anything for granted, but it was it was tough because we had a job to do, and you couldn't sit back and go, "Oh wow, I really enjoyed that," because you're so much into the grind. But there will be uh, a, a great opportunity for me to reflect and, and really appreciate all that happened. But for me, it was about winning the next game, and we weren't done, as I, as I told everybody before I left. And unfortunately, I made um, didn't didn't follow through on what I said. But uh, I, I will look back and reflect and have that opportunity. Uh, but. Uh, you know, it was just a matter of finishing the job when you're there. Got some time now. Are you going to get away at all? Or are you going to, uh, I'm going recruiting. Uh, well, well, Yay. I, 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 I think you should uh, recruit maybe the Bahamas. Yes. <laughs> that would, talk to Shane about that. Uh, you, uh, you know, and, and you know, it, it's tough because in my sport, we have to go from one thing right to the other. But there'll be time where I'll find that time. Um, a lot of coaches say that experience is almost invaluable. Um, what is the experience of getting to this national tournament and getting this far? Um, and obviously, unfortunately, didn't have the outcome we wanted. Uh, but just the experience as a coach and for your players, how does that go into next year and kind of thrive on it? I don't think – I think that it was real. I, I, as a coach, I can always point to it now and say, hey, when we were at the Final Four, this is what happened or this is what didn't happen. So I think the reality of it all, and I think it just adds a little bit more truth to it. Sometimes players, you know, they're going to be like, ah, she doesn't know what she's talking about. And, and I know that a lot of the returners will speak to those opportunities and those moments, and so will I. So I do think that that experience is a, a huge piece of the journey because we can refer back to it.